All right, so this will be a fun one here. Uh, we're going to be building the gantry. There's lots of little parts to this, but it's still pretty straightforward. You're going to do a little bit of soldering here, so make sure to turn your soldering on like I just did. <laughs> and get your wire out. Let's see, we got a lot of little parts. We got a separate motor, a drag chain, the, the X-Rail, the X gantry, some pulleys, some sprockets, some end stops. You have your laser bracket here and your end stop bracket. And yeah, once you got that stuff, I think we're, we're good to start. So first thing I'm going to do is attach my idler pulley bracket here, my idler pulley piece. So... Again, I've got two brackets here that are preloaded. I'm going to attach those to this little piece here. I've got two screens, if you didn't notice. Hopefully, that helps you understand what's going on. I'm going to be zooming in with the camera with the angled view, and the top view will sort of stay stagnant there to try to help you keep track of what I'm doing. I guess I should work in that <laughs> that camera space, both camera spaces at the same time. Having some troubles with this. Oh, I didn't put a washer on that one. My bad. Guess I should preload these things correctly, huh? So washer, bolt, bracket, and then slot nut. All right. There we go. Try to get them even and tighten it up. There we go. That's That's feeling tight. Cool. Now this long one, the long one you have left, this is your gantry, okay? So we're going to have the idler pulley on this side of the gantry. There we go. And I'm just going to have it where the, the corner bracket just sits right to the edge here and then tighten it up. All right, so now that that's done, I also have my uh, my X NEMA mount here. So I'm going to actually mount the stepper motor. Well, I guess it'll go like this, huh? Like this here, okay? So I know where the center of this is because I can see it with my eyes, right? So what I'm going to do to mount my idler pulley is I'll put a bolt in here and then I'll sort of loosely place it and then I'll use this bracket to center it. So get out your gigantic box of idler pulleys or, you know, open up the package you ordered. <laughs> I'll use a tooth idler pulley. Okay. And then you're going to need a longer M5 screw for this. I think I'll use an M5 by 16. What by 14? Yeah, here, here's a 16. I'll use that. Okay. Okay. So, just put the idler pulley on that screw there, right? And then... Grab an M5 slot nut. And place that in there, in that slot up top. 
and then lightly, lightly tighten it, okay? Now I'm going to take this thing, line it up here, and center the pulley to this bracket. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to torque it on there just a little bit. It's literally making the screw bottom out into the aluminum frame. All right. And now we have a nice little idler pulley hanging out here. Okay, so there's that. Then I'm going to flip it on its side here. Okay. And I'm going to place the rail on. Okay, now again, be really careful that you don't lose the the carriage here. That the carriage never comes off. It slides kind of easy. Be careful that you never lose that carriage. There we go. Okay, this one also had some extra bearings in it in case I did lose the carriage. So I'm going to cut those out. And if I ever need the bearings, I got them right here. Okay. And then I have these M3 slot nuts out here somewhere. <laughs> there they are. Hidden underneath the, the laser bracket. Okay. So flat side up. All right, and then somewhat spread out, not a huge deal wear right now. I'm gonna take my my uh, rail here and sort of estimate where, well, I guess I'll get them actually pretty accurate. So this one will go all the way to the end. This one over here will go all the way to the end. Okay. Now this one will go somewhat inside. This one will go somewhat inside. I'm not going to count the exact amount of holes. You can if you want. But, I mean, it really doesn't matter that much. <laughs> and then I'll, then I'll use some M3 by 8 millimeter screws to attach those. Need four of those, there's four, cool. All right. And that one grabbed, not all the way tight, right? Not till we capture them all. And then we'll tighten them down. There we go. And I'm going to make sure the other ones are lined up. So that one's good. And now I forgot which hole it is. As I move my eyes away, it's that hole. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And then... There we go, this hole. All right. Maybe. There it is. Cool. All right, now I'm gonna pull the rail like just down, down a little bit. That way it stays perfectly straight, right? Tighten this side, tighten this side, and then tighten the middle ones. All right. And this thing moves pretty nice. Okay, now I'm gonna take this bracket here and I have to countersink this. Okay. Little countersink tool. See the two holes that are just standing alone up top. That's your, uh, let's see if we can get it in here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I guess it's upside down on this view. But the two holes on bottom here 
are your uh, is the top piece here, and then you got these four holes like in the middle. I don't know if you see that, but you got a row down here, and then four in the middle, and then a row up top, and then the top holes, which are right here. <laughs> Sorry about moving around like that, but we need to countersink the four in the middle. Okay. I typically put a certain amount of pressure and then just count for about four seconds here. One, two, three, four. And that I've learned makes about the right countersink. One, two, three, four. All right. Cool. Okay, so these holes up top, right? Okay, these holes are the top. They go on the idler, right? idler pulleys up top, right? So place this here, and you got four holes. Now you need four M3 countersinks. And this is a three millimeter piece, so I should find at least a six millimeter countersunk screw. There's one, two, three. All right, there we go. There's four of them. Okay, then screw that on. And perfectly flush. And a little deep, but that's all right. This one's also perfectly flush. Cool. And then last one. All right, so that's our laser bracket here. This is gonna hold the two lasers that we have. Now, if you have a single laser, it's gonna look very similar, except for you still have the four holes, just it's gonna be skinnier. <laughs> okay, so we got that on. Now we're gonna get the uh, the stepper motor on the other side. Mine's already preloaded. I actually preloaded it in a different video. Okay. <sighs> Wrong area. There we go. We want this on the side here. Okay. So we got this in. And I'm going to bring this rail to about the edge. And set this kind of right there. We're going to move this eventually, but for our initial setting, I'll put it right there. Somewhere I have tools. Okay. Like that for now. And then we're going to mount our stepper. So this has a cord coming out of it, right? It'd be silly for us to have that cord being straight up or this way, right? Coming out this way here. So my idea here is to have it coming down so that way you can keep organized with all the other wires that we'll have okay so with the cable coming downwards I'm gonna mount this up here I should probably grab some screws and I mounted this too low so I'll have to loosen that up my bad oh there's this driver I was looking for okay loosen this up a little bring the bracket up and tighten it back down there you go now the holes line up right Okay, so this is six millimeter, so I'm gonna find some, let's do some 10 millimeter screws on this one.
And make sure to use washers because we're going against acrylic. And we want to spread that load. Don't want to really crack the acrylic. Okay. So screw washer and then acrylic and motor. And kind of tight, but not that tight. So we can still move it around and line up the other screws. Same thing across from it. And with this one, I've got confidence that the other ones will line up. So I'm going to tighten this one down. I'll tighten the first one down. And then I'll put the other two screws in here. And there we go. All right. So now we got to put a a sprocket on the on the motor here. So open up your bin full of sprockets. Now this one I designed for a GT two by twenty millimeter or by by twenty tooth a twenty tooth GT two gear. Okay, yeah, I think it's one of these. <laughs> I've got some 16s, some 24s, and some 25s all mixed up here. Actually, hmm, I'm not going to sit here and count them. I'll just try one. This one looks about right. <laughs> we'll play that game. Okay. And then, so we got the sprockets on here, right? Okay, and then we got our uh, our set nuts, our grub screws that hold it onto the shaft, that black part right there. Okay, so gear side, or yeah, tooth side towards the motor and sprocket side away from the motor here, okay? I'll, uh, I'll try to zoom in here to show you this. There we go, okay. So sprocket side towards the motor, uh, set screw side away from the motor. Okay. So here's my set screw right there. This is my shaft. This is called the D shaft. On most NEMA 17s, it's got a D shaft. It's got a little flat area. And that's where you want that first grub screw to hold on to. So I'm going to line that first grub screw I have to the shaft here. Slide it on. And then don't push it all the way against the motor. Give it a little bit of a space, like a millimeter or so, just a tiny bit. And then tighten that grub screw on. Tighten it on pretty well. A lot of little issues come with people not tightening these things on well enough. So give it a good bit of torque there. Like It's hard to explain the amount of torque, but <laughs> give it a good amount. And do it again with the other screw. Okay. We'll call that good. Now we have this guy on, okay? And now we need to measure out our belt. So I just have piles of belts here in a box. Yours probably came in a nice, organized, pretty looking roll. Mine did also a while back, but for now I'll just detangle this on video <laughs> cool okay i'll zoom the camera back out something like that okay <clears throat> now we need to figure out how much belt we need so i'm going to wrap around come behind this thing i'm going to wrap around the idler pulley and this tooth the uh, sprocket here and i'm going to figure out where they meet where the belt actually meet where the belt actually meets right here okay so with that i got my finger on it 
And now I need to grab scissors. There we go. And this doesn't have to be exact because we can tighten it over here. So if you are worried about messing this up, give it a little extra to cut, okay? That way you can always cut down. It's a lot harder to extend these things. It's much easier to cut them, <laughs> make them shorter than it is longer. So if you leave it longer, you can always fix that later. So here I am cutting this with regular scissors, all right? And I'm gonna wad this up <laughs> the center I am and put it back in the box. Cool, okay. So I got this belt that's about the right length. Okay. And then I got this bracket. This bracket you should have 3D printed. So this bracket is going to sit on top of this laser bracket back here, right? Everything's going to be flush to the top. I'll zoom in on this to show you. Something like this, okay. So, this belt is gonna mount to the bottom of this bracket here. I'm gonna dig out some uh, belt clamps. There they are. Okay, and then an M4 screw by, I don't know, what do we got? This is 10 millimeters, this is about six. So I'd say, I'd say 20, 20 millimeter M4 screw. And if you have them, try to find a flat head or a button head, button cap, whatever you want to call it. Not a countersunk. Something like this will work. This is a dome head or a button head, whatever you want to call it, button cap. Okay, so then this mounts like uh, like this here. So I'm going to bring my screw underneath here. Okay. Bring this on here. Okay. I guess that's a little short for this belt clamp. I guess uh, I'll change the design by the time I release this so it's long enough to fit this belt clamp properly. But this will work. There's nothing wrong with this. Especially if we're just moving lasers around. But it doesn't look as good. So I'll, in the design, I'll extend this for you guys. Okay. So we got that there. And then we need a washer and a nut. Oh. Drop the nut. There it is. <laughs> okay. So I got the washer on there. And then got the nut. Okay, and now I'm tightening this on just a little bit here. And then I'm going to take my belt. Okay, make sure it's perfectly round, right? Like no twists or curls in it here. Okay. Then I'm going to place the belt under the clamp. Place it under the clamp over here also with an extra tooth just laying in there. Okay, hopefully you saw that. And then I'm gonna start tightening this, this onto here. It's a little awkward to hold, but once it gets a little bit of a grab, it's a lot easier. So I'm, I'm holding the, the nut with these two fingers and then holding the clamp still with this. And now that I actually have some hold to it, I can take, oh, there it is. I can add a little torque to it here. There we go. Okay. Not too much torque. 
It doesn't need much, just, you know, enough to be firm here. Okay, again, it's hard to describe <laughs> how much torque you actually need for this stuff. So now we've got this nice loop here. We've got this nice loop, okay? So then wrap it around your idler and wrap it around your stepper motor here, right? Okay, and it's got a bit of dangle to it. Well, that's easy to fix. Once I find the tool that was just here. There it is, cool, all right. So I'm gonna loosen my stepper motor bracket and then pull this tight, okay? Now with this, I'm gonna take my, my middle finger here and grab the edge of the, the extrusion with this and my thumb and pull the edge of the acrylic with this, okay? And the whole stepper motor is gonna tilt a little like this. We want that, okay? We want that little bit of tilt because we'll fix it with the final torque. Okay, so we got it pulled tight and I'm gonna tighten this pretty firm. Now, I'm gonna put my palm into the edge of this here and pull this down, okay? Pull the whole stepper motor down and then tighten that up. And now, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty tight. I can get it tighter if I want. I don't think I need it tighter, but it's a very low note. I'll see if we can capture that note. <laughs> Hopefully that captured. I'm not sure if it did. I'll, I'll check later. Okay. Now that this is here, now we can attach it to the bracket. Now, if you look at the back of this little mount, it's got these hexagonal uh, indents in it that's made to fit the M3 screws. So let's grab some M3 by 12. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll use, yeah, we'll just use regular screws here. I was considering using washers. If we had a really long laser, we might need to use washers on it, but I think our lasers are short enough. <laughs> Most of them are anyways. We'll see. We'll, we'll regret it later not doing it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If I got a video, I'll show you. So I'm going to countersink these. Okay. You might not have to do this depending on how short your lasers are. Okay, so those are countersunk. And then I'm gonna grab some countersunk screws here. Some longer ones, okay. Those are good, and then two, uh, two nuts, just regular nuts here, okay. And I guess I'll place them in. All right. And put a nut in here and start capturing it. I'm just gonna swallow that. And then tighten up. Perfect. Do it again. This one's a little harder. <laughs> Whoops. Lost it. Maybe I'll put the nut in first. See if I can do that. Maybe. Yeah, that's not doing it. Just place it there. Okay, different idea. I'll get a super long screw and grab it and suck it in with it. So here's a 40, 40 millimeter M3, right? Push it in there. 
I'm gonna <laughs> still struggle with this, I guess. I'm gonna put it on the tip of this 40 millimeter piece, right? Okay, get that screwed on just a little bit. Maybe. Maybe there's something wrong with this nut. <laughs> I'm gonna try a different nut here. All right, so that's on the tip there. And that's screwing right in. Okay, <laughs> that might have been that nut issue. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull, pull that nut into that slot there. And then we're going back to the M3 countersunk screw. And place it in there. I got a finger on the back side, making sure it doesn't pop the nut out. And there it goes. All right. So now that's all flush here. Or sunk it in, which is all right. Cool. Okay. Now, as I move my laser bracket around... It, you know, runs the motor here. Kind of satisfying, right? And you can see that the belt stays perfectly straight the entire time. So you get extremely high accuracy here. All right. That's satisfying. I'll do that just a couple more times. There we go. <laughs> Satisfied. And now I'll continue the video. Okay. Now we have, let's, uh, let's go with the, the end stops over here. So end stops, I mounted this little plate. So the idea here is that this little piece sticking off here will run into the end stop. Okay, there'll be an end stop on this bracket here. Okay, and this piece right here is going to run into it. So I'm going to take that and mount an end stop to it. I like to use these little end stops, and that's what the bracket is designed for. I guess I could put one more hole in this bracket, so if people want to use the bigger end stops, they can. I'll make sure to do that, too. If you guys have any suggestions whatsoever, feel free to tell me. Or if you need help with, like, a design issue, or you just have ideas, <laughs> let me know. This, uh... Onshape is a really easy program to use, and I can incorporate all sorts of neat stuff into it, if you'd like. So I've got M2 screws, four M2 washers, and two M2 nuts. And I've got my little drivers for them in here, too. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have it click on the outside. So with your bracket like this, I guess I'll zoom in for you guys. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to have is the end stop here on the outside so it can click into that. Okay. So paddle up or down doesn't really matter. But I'm going to take my screw, my M2 screw. I'm going to put a washer on it. Okay. Put it through the acrylic. And then washer. And then nut. Okay, and then I'll do it one more time, and then I'll take a try to get a good close shot of what I just did. Okay. And 
There we go. Okay, before I tighten it, I'm going to get a close-up shot. There it is. <laughs> Hopefully that helps you. Sorry, it's a little wobbly. Okay. So now that that's on there, I'm going to tighten it up. Now I have tools that actually fit these things. I mean, you can just use, like, I don't know, a, a two, two, uh, what are they called? Pliers. <laughs> and just twist them. You might have an Allen key this small. But yeah, these are tiny little things here. Okay. Those are tightened on. Okay. Now, before I mount this to the frame here, I'm going to solder it, the gantry, I guess, not the frame, the gantry. I want to do a little soldering here. And this time I'll try to get really, really close for you guys so you guys can watch this. Okay. So if you look closely... I guess I'll grab one that's not mounted. There's a few uh there's a few letters on these things, okay? So on here we have C N O and N C. Okay? So this pin right here is C, this pin is N-O, this pin is N-C. So C means common. That means it's connected to either one of those. This is your common pin, right? N-O means normally open. That means this pin is normally not connected to this one. This pin says N-C, which means it's normally connected. So when I click this in, or if I, let's say I don't touch anything, right? That means this pin out here is connected to this pin. When I trigger this thing, Then it's going to connect this pin to your common. It's going to connect your normally open to the common. It's going to close that normally open one. So hopefully that makes sense. This is going to be our end stop for our X. So the two pins that are closest to the hinge point of this, we're going to solder here, okay? Now I like to, if you guys are going to follow along color-wise, I'm going to be using gray and purple for this one. Okay, now the length. The length is a tough one to explain. <laughs> Just, uh, boy, it's because everybody's doing different size frames. Uh, measure the entire width of your frame plus the entire length of your frame plus the entire length of the gantry plus about 100 millimeters or so. 100, plus 200 millimeters or so. Okay. Yeah, plus 200 millimeters or so. And then that should be about right. <laughs> if you're nervous about it, cut a little extra. I'm not exactly sure the best way to calculate exactly what we need, especially since they're all going to be built a little bit differently. So I'm just going to pull out two long lengths of gray and purple. Okay, so here's some gray and purple. One arm's length, <laughs> two arm's length. That should be plenty. Now, we can extend the wire if we need. If you accidentally grab too little, we can always extend it by soldering or crimping. Okay, so here I'm going to chop this up. Okay, soldering to these things. So we need to tin these two connectors there we 
we need to tin these two connectors and we need to tin the wires here and then put them together. Okay. So I'm going to hang my solder. I guess I'll just have it up here. There we go. Something like that. Okay. Take my iron. I'm going to try to make this camera friendly. So I'm going to wet my tip here. There we go. Nice shiny tip. Got a little bit of solder on it. And I'm going to place my wire onto the puddle and add a little more solder to it. There we go. And now the tip of these wires has solder in it. Okay. Puddle up. Place my wire into that puddle and then bring some fresh solder into it. Perfect. Cool. All right. So these things are tinned. These wires are tinned. And now I got to tin these uh these connectors here, these pins. So coming from underneath, pull a solder Add a little solder to it. Perfect. And perfect. All right. And I spilt some on the acrylic. I don't think I really care. <laughs> Whatever. It'll probably just snap off once, uh, once it cools. And then I'm going to take my wire here. I'm going to do my purple for the common. Now, I like to work left to right. So... Because my soldering iron is on the left side here. Okay. So I'm going to take this. Try to do this camera friendly here. Let's see. So wire along this. A little bit of heat till everything melts. And then pull it off till everything re-solidifies. And that's a good connection. Going to do that one more time with the grate. Okay, lay it along there, <laughs> maybe, I need some weight on this, there we go, okay, let's try this, okay, I'm trying to keep this camera friendly here. So wires laying flat on this. Flattish, <laughs> melt it, let it reharden, and we're good. Cool, that's a solid connection there. Okay, and always put your soldering iron away dirty. Never clean it when you're putting it away. The solder on the outside will protect the tip and make it last longer. There it is. You can see the little bit of solder <laughs> that fell on the bottom. That's all right. But decent looking connections here. Okay. So this is built now. Okay. Going to put my soldering iron to the side. Not going to need it till another video. So I'll turn it off. Okay, now, this whole thing here, this gantry, <laughs> this mess squeegee here, there we go, <laughs> uh, is going to, well, this laser head should be able to travel most of the gantry. We won't know the full travel until we put it actually on the Y rails and see where it sits. So placing this end stop here exactly where it needs to go isn't like super important yet, okay? So I use M3 acrylic or three millimeter acrylic for this. So I'm gonna use M3 bolts, uh, sorry, M5 by 10 bolts, <laughs> M5 by 10 bolts, M5 washers, and then M5 slot nuts. Okay. And then a tool. All right. 
We got a tool. Okay. Gonna preload the thing. Oh, there it is. Wherever it's hiding. Okay, got that one in. Got this one in. Now, these are extra loose because it's got to pass by something. <laughs> got to pass by this this either bracket here. There we go. Going to bring this across here. And it needs to go in, I don't know, about this far to actually hit it. Straighten it as best as I can. Sure. Going to tighten it up. And now, as I slide this this uh, laser bracket across, it runs into that. Very nice. Okay. So, this is our gantry now. We're built. <laughs> we built the gantry. We're going to do wiring for the gantry in the next video. Good job, guys. Thanks for watching.